Welcome to this latest Union Solidarity International web conference which is uploaded onto YouTube and on iTunes. Today we are being joined by Theo Cariotis from the Solidarity Committee who is acting on behalf of the workers at the Vayumi plant in Thessalonica in the north of the country. It's a pleasure to have you with us today, Theo, to give the latest situation on the ground from the workers' perspective and the activities of the Solidarity Committee. Welcome, my friend. Hello, everyone. Theo, I would just like to open the conversation by asking you just to give us a brief history of the situation in the plant and how it's found itself in the position it does today. The, the struggle of the workers began maybe two years ago when uh, the boss uh, abandoned the factory. Actually, it was uh, the a subsidiary of a greater company that went bankrupt. So, VMA was an asset of a bankrupt uh, company. The owners abandoned the factory and stopped paying, paying wages. So, at first, the struggle revolved around getting all their wages back and they were withholding the labor up until uh, recently. Legally withholding the labor, I mean. After several, uh, several meetings with uh, the authorities, they realized that um, they are only one of uh, several hundred struggles right now of uh, workers to get their wages because there's hundreds of uh, shut down businesses and factories in Greece. So uh, the workers, uh, they started to think about other courses of action. About one year ago, they realized that the only way forward is to assume the control of production and they announced this plan to society. They also announced this plan to the Ministry of uh, Labour. The reaction of the political parties and of the political establishment uh, was not very friendly, was not enthusiastic, but the social movements had an enthusiastic uh, reaction. So immediately the, there was the, we saw the creation of uh, uh, solidarity an open solidarity assembly, which means that anyone can uh, participate, which means uh, uh, it meets once a week with the participation of the workers. And uh, in collaboration with the solidarity assembly, they started the huge uh, campaign that led up to the uh, start of production, the kickstarting of production, about three weeks ago on the 12th of uh, February. Thank you for that very insightful introduction to the situation on the ground and this you know provokes memories for me i come from the city of glasgow which had a very famous work in in the 1970s in the shipyards in glasgow and that example showed how workers could actually make a factory and shipyards productive and efficient despite the efforts of the company to shut down the shipyards at that time. And of course the workers in the Viome plant find themselves in this situation as a result of being a subsidiary of a company that had debts, of course, and you can find out more information on your website, which is an excellent blog. And we, of course, have got much content on our website publicizing the situation. Now, I know over the last couple of weeks, Theo, that there's been a number of activities on the ground that are designed to raise money, including a concert involving very famous Greek musicians. Do you want to tell us an update on some of the activities that are going on and have happened in order to raise money for the workers? Yes. When the workers realised that the ministry was not going to help them with self-management of the factory, they decided to start production anyway. So we organized three days of intense mobilization with the participation of thousands of people. There was a, a caravan of people of, the, of all the solidarity movements uh, around Greece to Thessaloniki, where we all met on uh, Sunday 10th of February on a great uh, assembly of the solidarity movement with the workers. And then on the next day, we had a big march, a very vibrant march uh, through the city center of Thessaloniki, which uh, uh, concluded in the stadium where a concert was taking place. 
the people in the concert are um, um, part of the movement, but at the same time they're very well-known uh, folk uh, artists that uh, always uh, help us with uh, fundraising in these uh, situations. So there was a huge crowd that was drawn to the concert, where there were about uh, six or seven, uh, seven thousand people, uh, much uh, higher than the capacity of the stadium. So many people stayed outside. And uh, these were really, really moving uh, moments because uh, the workers took the microphone and they explained their plan to uh, about five or six uh, thousand people that were there. And they were cheering, they were chanting. People were, we felt a strong sense of unity at that moment. We felt that this can go forward if there is such a huge solidarity movement. On the next day after the concert, um, the workers entered the factory. There were media, the media also there, several media, national, local, and alternative media. And there were many people from the, uh, the factory. So uh, the machines were started on uh, Tuesday, 12th of uh, February. The Benefit Geek provided some uh, funding. And there is also an international and uh, national fundraising campaign through our website, that is uh, viome, V-I-O-M-E dot org. And uh, we have a, a donate button there, and we are trying to uh, collect uh, money from solidarity, from uh, people that are solidarity in the abroad. And uh, up to now, we have a great response. Also, we are, people are very welcome to leave their uh, solidarity messages there, which are all translated and transmitted to the workers. And the workers are very, very optimistic, and their morale is very, very high right now exactly because of all this huge wave of solidarity that is uh, coming from all over the world. Theo, that's absolutely fantastic to hear, and particularly the concert where between six and 7,000 people showed up to give their solidarity with the workers. That's absolutely fantastic to hear, and I'm pleased that the workers have felt a sense of solidarity, not only from the local communities and in wider Greece, but from across the world. And thank you for illustrating how, as trade unions and individuals, we can visit your website in order to give a donation to the campaign. Is there anything else, Theo, that you think would be helpful to the workers and the Solidarity Committee to give extra support. Of course, we at Union Solidarity International hope to have regular conversations with yourself and members of the Solidarity Committee, including the workers, in order to ensure that this campaign builds momentum and builds up steam. Is there anything else that we can do, Theo, to help the Solidarity Committee and the workers? Of course, uh, what we can do all together uh, is uh, keep this thing alive, keep the information flowing, uh, send the information to all our colleagues, uh, to all our comrades, uh, to everyone we know. And uh, then one another big thing that the workers keep stressing is that the greatest form of solidarity is that all workers organize in their own communities. So we just don't need just a flow of uh, money and messages towards uh, VOME. We would also like to see a wave of self-organization, of self-management uh, that is extended throughout uh, Europe and throughout uh, the world. So the biggest help would be for people to organize, to take over the workplaces where there is a similar uh, situation and create a big network of uh, self-managed factories, to create a big international uh, movement. Uh, of course, uh, another thing that would be helpful uh, would be to help uh, people, uh, help uh, the VOMA workers with uh, access to the market. We don't know exactly how this is going to take place yet, because uh, right now, because of the legal part of the struggle, the VOMA workers cannot export the products anymore. But we expect this to uh, be solved soon, which means that uh, the VOMA workers uh, are researching right now some new products, some ecological cleaning products that uh, would be able to be channeled, to be distributed through the Solidarity Network mm -hmm. and could also be able to be exp uh, exported. Okay. So it would be 
be very helpful to set up an international sales network for these uh, products, but we, we are not in the position to uh, ask for this yet. Okay, that, that's very helpful, and I'm sure people watching and listening to this web chat will be fascinated to hear how they can directly in the future hopefully be able to buy the products that can sustain the workers and the factory itself. Teo, I think it would be quite helpful if you could just run through some examples of the products that are currently being made and that you hope to do in the future. You've just referred to some eco-friendly products. I think that would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. The factory um, was a quite productive factory and quite profitable one before it shut down and uh, mainly it specialized in uh, building materials related to tiles. So the parent company was making tiles and uh, the subsidiary company was making all of the accessories like uh, uh, tile adhesive, sealants, mortars, plasters, the list can go on and on. There are about a hundred uh, materials that can be produced right now by this factory. A possible problem is that uh, these are all voluminous products, so they cannot be shipped very far away. But some of them can be shipped. Okay, that's, that's very helpful once again. And just to give our listeners and viewers an idea, how many workers are directly involved in the working at the moment and how many other workers do you estimate are the beneficiaries in the supply chain as a result of the products that the, the Viome workers are producing? Right now the workers union has uh, 38 members. The factory had 70 workers before it shut down but many of them they just found other jobs or they went away from the project. The workers have a business plan that is projected for about 65 uh, working positions. So when the factory is, is in full production, 65 people can be employed there. And now, um, how can we cal calculate how many people will benefit from this? It's a very uh, sought after product. It had a great part of the market before the factory shut down. Mm -hmm. So it has the potential of generating a lot of uh, extra uh, employment positions. That's very, very fascinating to hear. I think this is a really encouraging and indeed inspiring examples how workers can self-organize and how they can put in a business plan in place to keep a factory operating and being productive and profitable that can sustain jobs and jobs that otherwise, otherwise would have been disappeared and gone to dust as a result of the activities of parent companies who got the Viome workers into a terrible situation through no fault of their own. Teo, mm -hmm. it's a real pleasure to talk to you today. I hope this is one of a number of conversations mm -hmm. that we can have with you over the coming months as we yeah. at Union Solidarity do all we can to show meaningful solidarity with the workers at Viome. It only leaves me to thank you for your participation today and solidarity, comrade. Thank you. I just want to add that uh, on the 16th of March, there is a solidarity march to the VOMA struggle in Washington, in the USA. So if anyone is watching, please attend. There, there's going to be a direct uh, video connection with the workers afterwards. We will let you know if this is going to be broadcast uh, in the web. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my friend.